So um, it's, it's a real privilege to be asked to talk to you all today about chronic kidney disease and pregnancy. Um, my talk will be focusing on pregnancy, but I'd like to just give you an introduction of um, where we are with chronic kidney disease. It currently is a public health problem throughout the world. Um, two years ago, authors published population-based studies spanning the entire global prevalence of chronic kidney disease. And what they found was that the prevalence of chronic kidney disease is greater for women compared to men. In high-income countries, 61 million women have chronic kidney disease compared to 48 million men. And in low- and middle-class income countries, 210 million women have chronic kidney disease compared to 177 million men. These are huge numbers. And the graph on the left, the bar chart, shows the pink color is obviously women and the blue is men. And the age disparities exist um, after the age of 40. So after the age of 40, we start to see gender differences in the prevalence of chronic kidney disease, with women having more kidney disease than men. And despite women having more prevalence of chronic kidney disease, there are significant health disparities. And that varies because women have decreased access to medical care, as we all know. Um, there are gender differences in access to medical care, and there's data lacking as to why that is in patients with chronic kidney disease. Once women develop chronic kidney disease, they also have a higher risk factor for other diseases, such as autoimmune disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's disease. And as you all know, women get pregnant, so we have that additional challenging condition. Um, it also provides women an opportunity to seek medical care when they're pregnant, and it's an opportunity for people to get diagnosed with chronic conditions during pregnancy, because that's possibly many times the, probably the first um, physical exam that many women may have in their lives. When women reach chronic dialysis, what we know about that is that less women than men are actually on dialysis. I don't know why that is, and there's a lot of literature um, and research that needs to be done in this area. I don't know whether it's because women's chronic kidney disease is, isn't as severe as men, or maybe women choose to opt to not move forward with dialysis, I don't know. We do know that less women have AV fistulas than men, and we don't know why. When it comes to kidney transplantation, women are less likely to be kidney transplant recipients. And that goes for living transplants as well as deceased donor transplants. And women are more likely to donate for living kidney transplantation than men. And, you know, people have made opinions and professional opinions about why they think this is. And some people think that women have decreased access to transplantation because during pregnancy, they're exposed to um, the antibodies from the fetus, and that increases the likelihood that they may have antibodies to the rest of the population, and that may reduce their chances of getting a kidney transplant. Other people think that women may be referred less for kidney transplant compared to men. Other people think that women have a tendency to have a more giving nature and are possibly less selfish than men and that's why they donate more than men. And that was a professor uh, who has published a lot in um, kidney transplantation and peritoneal dialysis who stated that in one of our forums recently, actually. Um, so, you know, the first pregnancy in a dialysis patient was described in 1971. And in 1975, an anonymous author quoted, children of women with kidney disease used to be born dangerously or not at all, not at all if their doctors had their way. And since then, there have been sporadic cases of pregnancies being described as case reports with women on dialysis. And in the last 15 years, the literature of pregnancy and dialysis has just grown tremendously. 
in so much so that there is so much literature now about how we have to change our counseling policies for women who are pregnant or wish to pursue pregnancy. We have to balance the needs and the, and the, uh, and the wish of the m mother who wishes to pursue pregnancy because many women only have a set number of years of childbearing years and they may have chronic kidney disease during those years. And so we have to counsel them in advance uh, to know what their options are so they know what their options are. So this is a woman um, who was a CKD patient who 10 years prior to getting pregnant was told that she could never get pregnant and she shouldn't because of her kidney disease. 10 years later during her pregnancy she said, I knew that the transplant would change my life and I wanted that kidney, but I wanted a baby a lot more. And from that point, I knew that my life was going to be so much more amazing because of him. She chose her baby over her health because it meant more to her than, than her health at that time. Motherhood meant more. So we, we have to make a combined decision with our patients instead of making it for them. Today I'm going to talk about the normal renal adaptation to pregnancy, the effect of pregnancy on kidney disease, the effect of kidney disease on pregnancy, and pregnancy and dialysis and transplantation. So advanced chronic kidney disease basically alters the hypothalamic pituitary axis dysfunction, which results in high prolactin levels and amenorrhea and anovulation and infertility. So many women with kidney disease have altered menstruation. They, don't, they may not know that they're pregnant because they have such irregular menstruation. Okay? And if they get pregnant, all these pregnancies are considered high risk. And I'll talk about that why. The prevalence of chronic kidney disease in pregnancy is 6%. And after kidney transplantation, fertility is restored very quickly, within days, within days. Conception rates are about 1.5% in dialysis patients. Quite possibly they may be higher than that, that's just a guesstimate. I mean, many women on dialysis don't even know that they're pregnant and they may lose their baby before they know they're pregnant. Conception rates of up to 15% have been reported with patients on nocturnal dialysis. So nocturnal dialysis is hemodialysis that patients do by themselves at home at night seven days a week or sometimes five or six days a week and they do it at home. And um, outcomes have improved to 85%. Pregnancy outcomes have improved to 85% in that population. So that's why it's important to provide pre-pregnancy counseling and work very closely with obstetrics and nephrology and make sure that everybody's on the same page. So the kidney goes through several changes during pregnancy. Anatomically, the kidney increases in size by approximately one centimeter. The glomerular hemodynamics change. There's vasodilatation. There's an increase in renal plasma flow and GFR. There's altered tubular function, electrolyte imbalances and pregnant patients end up with a reduction in sodium levels and potassium levels, which is a normal physiological mechanism. The effect of pregnancy on kidney disease, um, there are different types of kidney disease, um, and the pregnancy outcomes in those diseases are quite different. If patients have diabetic nephropathy with a creatinine less than 1.4, with good blood pressure control, these patients have excellent outcomes. However, with other types of kidney diseases like MPGN and FSGS, the outcomes are, are much poorer and there's a higher risk of kidney disease progression. The effect of pregnancy on kidney disease has been described over 25 years in numerous studies and what we've shown is that in mild kidney disease, pregnancy outcomes are very good. 96% of patients have excellent outcomes when they have a creatinine less than 1.4. However, if you have severe kidney disease with a creatinine greater than 2, you have a 40% chance of getting, going on dialysis within one year. So the major risks of pregnancy and kidney disease include preterm birth, preeclampsia, IUGR, gestational hypertension, and uncontrolled hypertension. And so these are the things that we look out for in our CKD patients when they're pregnant. Pregnancy and dialysis, 
Beta-HCG levels are elevated in all dialysis patients, and so it's not a good marker of pregnancy. If pregnancy is suspected, uh, it should be confirmed by ultrasound in all dialysis patients. Now, with, with the e efficiency of dialysis and the big numbers of patients that we have on dialysis, we have an 84% frequency of live births, and the improvement in outcome is attributed to aggressive dialysis. Um, do I, ha do I have one, two minutes? Ten minutes. Okay. Um, so the management of dialysis in pregnancy includes aiming for a BUN less than 45, which can involve up to 40 hours of dialysis per week, and weekly examinations and hemoglobin monitoring and electrolyte monitoring. I actually had a patient who underwent a successful pregnancy with this regimen. Um, when you Im increase the duration of dialysis, you can see that that dramatically decreases the risk of preterm birth and decreases the risk of small for gestational age. Long-term baby outcomes have been proven to be reasonably good. Babies have been followed for up to eight years and have had normal developmental milestones. And after kidney transplant, um, the you know I mentioned before, res uh, fertility is restored um, and the risk of graft loss is higher if the creatinine is greater than 1.5 post-kidney transplantation. So the aim is to make sure that you address all the risk factors um, during pregnancy to reduce risks of infection as well as complications of pregnancy. And these are some of the medications that uh, we use in pregnancy, which usually are all safe apart from mycophenolate and ACE inhibitors, which we all know anyway. So, okay, any questions? No? Okay. <laughs>